What's up folks, Mike for CMCC Builds here with another five minute build where we create a character in... Five minute maximum. Thanks again to my patrons who voted for this video. If you want to influence future video selections or get character sheets for all my builds, check out my Patreon. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, share, all the YouTube things. Today we're diving into part two of the Range Swords Bard series, building the character specifically for Baldur's Gate 3, a game I'm absolutely obsessed with right now. Please help me. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm funny. Not really. Oh, okay, that's enough. This build will focus on dual wielded hand crossbows. In this game, you don't need a hand to reload, and you don't need the crossbow expert feat to use your bonus action for an additional attack. This is in itself extremely powerful, but when stacked with some of the feats and bar features, it becomes absolutely bonkers. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, all right. Let's get rocking! For this build, which race should we take? Okay, what, it what, doesn't what? matter! There are no S tier races in Baldur's Gate, and Dimension Door gets the slight buff that it works on all allies, medium size or smaller. An excellent change that allows small races to take the spell without a disadvantage. There are no feet races or flying races. We don't need shield, weapon, or armor proficiency. So take an A tier race from the list right here, or any race that blows your hair back. Background and proficiencies are entirely dependent on your party makeup and preferences. I strongly prefer to play these types of games with a character that can pick locks, disarm traps, have solid perception and stealth, while also being the face of the party. With a bard, high charisma, and decent dexterity, this is entirely possible. For ability scores, we're dumping strength. 15 dex, 14 constitution, 8 intelligence. We're writing poems, not studying with gnomes. 10 wisdom and 15 charisma. Use your racial bonuses to bump charisma to 17 and dexterity to 16. There are no great half feats in this game apart from Tavern Brawler, which we don't want, and Resilient, which we don't want for charisma. BG3 doesn't have Fey Touch, Telekinetic, Telepathic, Skill Expert, Elven Accuracy, the racial half feats, and others. But there are other ways to get a plus one. If you know, you know. And if you don't, then make sure you figure it out if you're gonna be using this build so you can round off that charisma. Okay, pause the timer. Surprise! You're getting a 2-in-1 today. You're gonna get the Swords Bard build that I see floating around that can dish out insane attacks and damage. I'm finishing up my current run as this build. And then I'm gonna present what is in my opinion the actual most powerful Swords Bard. In fact, it was so powerful I specced out of it because it was just too good. I rarely ever got hit and it made combat too easy. I'm gonna give the rundown of all the levels rather than explain exactly how to progress. You just gotta respec as you see fit. We're going to Bard 6 in both builds, so be sure to go Bard 1 through 6 in both cases. Back to the builds. The Gunslinger version. Oh, how I wish you could choose a harmonica for your instrument. Flute will have to do. Take Fighter for level 1. We want Constitution saving throw, martial weapon, shield, and heavy armor proficiencies. You don't need to use heavy armor, but you can use the best magical armor available now. And on top of this, we get a fighting style. Take archery, of course. Some builds go as many as four levels in fighter. Two seems like a necessity for action surge. In the end, it's either a feat or action surge. If you prefer the extra action once per short rest, go with another level of fighter. We're not. We're going eight levels in bard. At three, take swords bard, of course. Your primary mechanism here is exactly the opposite of the 5e swords bard. Slashing Flourish, which allows for two attacks at the cost of a single Bardic Inspiration, which will come back on a short rest. 90% of my Bardic Inspirations go to this use. It's too good. We also get a Fighting Style. Prior to last week, this didn't matter, but right now, if you want to add damage to your offhand crossbow, you need to take two weapon fighting. Patch 4 changes, so make sure you take this Fighting Style. At Bard 4, take the Sharpshooter feat. The Power Attack negative 5 plus 10 is extremely powerful, especially with the Archery Fighting Style, and how easy it is to get bonuses to your attacks and advantage through hiding, surprise, and the verticality of the game. At Bard 5, those Bardic Inspiration dice come back in a short rest and increase to a D8. At Bard 6, you get extra attack. At this point, many people dip out of Bard to get more levels of Fighter. I want 4th level spells in an ASI. Bard 7 gives those 4th level spells like Dimension Door and Greater Invisibility, and Bard 8 allows you to round off Charisma, assuming you get a plus 1 in the game, and you also get another Bard spell. To finish off this build, which is at 9th level right now, you need 3 levels in Rogue. This gives plenty of goodies, Sneak Attack up to 2d6, Expertise, and Cunning Action, but at Rogue 3 we'll take the Thief subclass to get a second bonus action every single turn. Now you have extra attack for your main action, and two offhand bonus attacks, all of which can be doubled with the use of the Slashing Flourish. 
all with sharpshooters plus 10 and potentially all with advantage through either hiding, a higher elevation, invisibility, or one of your other spells. This is an incredibly strong build that can pretty much do it all. But is it as strong as the next build? I don't think so. Ready? It's simple. Level 1, Light Cleric. This gives medium armor proficiency and shield proficiency. It takes some strong cleric spells like Bless, Protection from Evil and Good, Shield of Faith, etc. that don't require saving throws or attack rolls. Healing Word only heals 1d4 hit points with a 10 wisdom character, but you should be using that spell primarily to bring up downed allies, so that bonus is largely irrelevant. If you want to free up a bardic spell slot, this can also be an option. We're here primarily for Warding Flare, which only requires your reaction and has no limit to its number of uses, unlike 5e. And when you're a ranged character with good AC, the number of attacks that sneak through are already limited. And now you can throw a disadvantage on top of one of those attacks that lands to really decrease the amount of damage you take. And with that, we jump into Bard for 11 levels. Bard 3, we go Swords Bard again, using those slashing flourishes when we want to dish out damage and conserve spell slots. At 4, we take Sharpshooter again. At 6, extra attack. At 8, we get another ASI feat. If you don't already have a magic item that gives advantage on concentration checks, remember we don't have constitution saving throw proficiency on this version of the build, then take Warcaster here. Otherwise, bump your Charisma to 20, assuming you got the permanent plus one. At level nine, fifth level spells, and at Bard 10, your inspirations are now D10s, you get additional expertise slots, and then the fantastic magical secrets. This was nerfed from the 5e version as only some spells are available, but there are still some very strong options. And to finish things off, at level 12, Bard 11, you basically get Eye Bite and Otto's Irresistible Dance, a perfectly thematic Bard spell. This build is functionally a full caster with ability to deal incredible range damage with the strong magic weapons available, sharpshooter and hidden crossbows, while also cherry picking some strong spell options from other classes. And you can do it all with magical medium armor and a shield strapped on your back for an excellent AC. Well folks, I hope you liked the builds today. Feel free to let me know what you liked or what you would do different in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and check out my Patreon to support the channel. See you here next time.